Well, a lot of people are talking about this earlier today. A long-awaited special counsel report found that President Biden mishandled classified documents but will not face any criminal charges. The report said Biden won't be charged because the jury would see him as a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing for Biden, but on the bright side, he'll forget about it five minutes later. So, I mean, just, just think, just, you know. They all clap. They all clap and they... Ah, isn't it great? We've got a maroon in the White House, and and we voted for him, and we think it's great. <clears throat> and now James Marshall Hendricks. Ba da ba da ba da 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 da. There must be some kind of way out of here, but there is no way out of here for Joe Biden. There is no escape. Man ruled too senile to stand trial, still fine to run the country as president of the United States and leader of the free world. Pay no attention to that. GOP lawmaker calls on cabinet to explore removing Biden under the 25th Amendment. Joe Biden was asked about the 25th Amendment last night. He says he loves that band. He thinks the 25th Amendment is an R&B band from the 1970s. He has all their albums. Well, happy Friday to you and welcome. And boy, I got to say, in uh, the political landscape, the, you know, the hits uh, just keep on coming. But a big, big day yesterday, the Supreme Court and President Trump, uh, Joe Biden foolishly decided to come out. And first they said he was going to make a statement. And then he said, I'm going to take questions. And I don't know if he surprised his handlers, but uh, he was done taking a few questions. And there were a couple of reporters I had never seen before shouting out loud like the old days. And um, he was walking away and someone put another question to him and he foolishly doddered back to the podium. And that's when he really got himself got himself into trouble, saying that uh, the president of Egypt was the president of Mexico. And he, I guess, wants to open the border on the south end of the Gaza Strip into Mexico. There are fake maps out there on the Internet now showing Mexico bordering Israel to the south because Joe Biden is so confused, he said the uh, president of, of Egypt, El Sisi, is, uh, and he's not, just saying, El Sisi uh, was the president of Mexico. He's a manly man. But uh, never mind that. Let me, uh, let me start getting into some audio. I'm sure that most of you are pretty well caught up on this, and hopefully you caught the big event on the television last night, because it was a history-altering event. The presidency of... Joe Biden is now very much on the rocks. And last night on Newsmax, I said, I think this is the the end of the Biden presidency. And uh, I stand by that. Now, he may even stay in the White House until he leaves uh, after being voted out of office. But I don't think so. I think the Democrats are running for cover and they're panicking. They're considering uh, gender transition surgery. Uh, they always do that. Oh, we got an update on uh, D's nuts too. We got an update on D's nuts. You know the guy that had his—he uh, was having sex change because he's a Democrat, and his testicles were um, put in a mayonnaise jar, and he gave them to his boyfriend who put him in the refrigerator, and uh, he wants them back now. He wants his uh, his testicles back. I've got an update for you on that because you know the Democrats make more news. Uh, outside of Washington than I think they do inside Washington. On uh, the cable news network, CNN, a terrible, awful, corrupt, dishonest network. And Paul Begala, a longtime Democrat political apparatchik. Uh, Actually, let's start with James Carville because it goes with James Carville from September of last year. September 7th of last year, James Carville was looking at the bad poll numbers for Joe Biden and the Democrats, and he said this. Is not very good. I, there was a memo. Uh, my friend Jim Messina said, I said, Democrats need to quit bedwetting. But my wife's already changed me to rubber sheets. <laughs> a lot of bedwetting for James Carville, uh, the uh, raging Cajun total freak show. 
And uh, Paul Begala, not much better. Longtime Democrat uh, professional bootlick, as opposed to the amateur bootlicks, which are many. They are legion. Paul Begala this morning on CNN, uh, kind of continuing with the Carvel theme. Look, uh, I'm a Biden supporter, I, I, and I slept like a baby last night. I woke up every two hours crying and went to bed. <laughs> Uh, this is this is terrible for Democrats, and a- anybody with a functioning brain knows that. Well, you know, your base uh, does not fall into that category. It's, I slept like a baby. It's not a bad line, I've got to say. I slept like a baby last night. I woke up every two hours like a baby, and I wet the bed like a baby. That is uh, Paul Begala. Uh, not pleased with what he saw last night, and they got a little laugh out of it, so... That's what sleeping like a baby is to Paul Begala and the Democrats and anybody with a functioning brain, not their base. Here's what you do. Instead of calling a press conference saying, I really am sharp, you attack the other guy. You know, the, the, Joe Biden gave the strategy in 2012. He was, I remember he was vice president. And he said, don't compare us to the almighty, compare us mm-hmm. to the alternative. So everything with Biden has to be not, I'm great, but the other guy's really damaging, dangerous, a threat. He made a passing reference. Joe Biden was vice president back then, I remember, he said. That was a reference to the fact that Joe Biden, in the interview with the special counsel, did not remember when he was vice president. Did not remember when his first day was as vice president. Did not remember when his last day was as vice president. Couldn't even come close. Was asking questions about it. Was I still vice president in 2009? You just became vice president on January 20th of 2009. His brain, she's a broke, she's a no good, he's a gotta go. It's official now, it's in legal documents. He didn't remember his last day as vice president, and he did not remember within years, years when his son Bo died, who he talks about practically every time he speaks out loud in public. And a sad passing to be sure, but nevertheless... And what is Begala's advice? Attack the other guy. Don't run on your own merits. Just vilify and demonize the other guy. That's what they're doing. That's because they're Hitler. See, just kidding, but that's what they call everybody. That's because they're Nazis. They're not really Nazis, but they're a lot closer than Republicans are. That's for damn sure. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, so I remember when he was vice president, even if he doesn't. And don't run on your record. Your record stinks. Your poll numbers are awful. Everybody knows you're a terrible disaster of a president. But attack the other guy. And I've been talking about this for years. The standard Democrat response. Change the subject and attack. For how long have I been saying that, Michael? For 15 years. The Democrat playbook is the Russian playbook, really the Soviet playbook. Change the subject and attack. Vilify the other guy. And what are they doing today, Michael? The news media, as uh, you know, an engorged um, extension of the Democrat Party, they're attacking Robert Hur, the special counsel, and smearing and slandering him. And they're attacking Donald Trump and smearing and slandering him. And their one of their tactics today is, well, Trump's old too. Yeah, Trump forgot something once during a press conference. Yeah, once. The liberal on my show last night on Newsmax attacked Ronald Reagan who slipped on one answer to one question at one press conference 40 years ago. And I, and I had to laugh, and I, and I said, um, you know, I'm sorry, you're going back 40 years to find a Ronald Reagan slip? You know, one difference, one big difference, I said, Jason, is that Ronald Reagan was having one of the most successful presidencies of the 20th century. I don't think anything similar to that could be said about Joe Biden in the 21st century. Now let's go to Lunch Bucket Joe last night. Um, just uh, just amazing. He's like, well, gosh, I just wanted to cooperate so much that, you know, I did interviews and it took f- five hours and it was just too much for me. I was so determined to give the special counsel what he needed, I went forward with a five-hour in-person, five-hour in-person interview over two days uh-huh. on October the 8th and 9th of last year. He's reading it. Even though Israel had just been attacked by Hamas on the 7th and I was very occupied. You didn't care. That's a, what, you, what you were trying to find ways to undermine Israel while they're being attacked by Hamas. You know, in our so-called border bill, which uh, protects the border of, of Ukraine, 
but not the United States. There are billions of dollars in there to be dispersed. They don't want to be too specific. To Hamas and to the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Never mind all that. Joe Biden, let's gosh, I, I did. I just, I'm, I was being so good. And, and, uh, mind. And it's, oh, and then he became upset because the report says he didn't remember within years when his son Bo died, even though he talks about it uh, twice a day. I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. And he's angry. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. Didn't. How in the hell dare he raise that? How the hell dare he? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. It's Let me in the, tell you something. It's in the papers. Some of you have commented. I wear since the day he died. Listen to this. Every single day, the rosary he got from Our Lady of... Our Lady of, he forgets. Our Lady of someplace. Every Memorial Day, we hold a service remembering him. I believe that, and, I, and it's a very sad uh, thing, of course. Um, you know, he was uh, uh, apparently the good one. He was a good man, uh, Bo Biden, and he was the Attorney General of Delaware member uh, the crackhead son, Hunter, stole his badge and left it on a crack binge in Los Angeles in the rent-a-car that uh, he dumped somewhere. The badge that his brother had as attorney general of Delaware. No big deal. Everything's uh, no problem when you're a Democrat. It's good to be a Democrat. Now, he forgot Our Lady of something. And people can say, well, well, he was having an emotional moment. You could see that he was struggling to remember Our Lady of you know, perpetual help, Our Lady of <clears throat> Guadalupe, Our Lady of whatever it was. But he couldn't remember. He came out to hold a press conference to prove that his memory was sound. And the results were the exact opposite of that. The result of his press conference, designed to show that his brain is working fine, proved irrefutably that his brain is very severely broken. And he took a couple of questions. Then he went wandering off with his arms hanging off his sides like they don't work. And uh, a couple of reporters were yelling questions at him, you know, like an American press corps. And he turned around and, and doddered, wobbled back to the podium. And that's when he really screwed up. But um, still going on about his son, Bo, because it wasn't, you know, it, they said in the interview, couldn't remember within years. What year was it that he died? He didn't know. He was miles off. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone. He's angry. Remind me when he passed away or passed away. Anger. Nobody was reminding Simple you. The truth is I sat for a five-hour interview over two days of events going back 40 years. At the same time I was managing an international crisis. What is the going back over 40 years? What are you, what are you talking about now? <clears throat> it's got nothing to do with what we're talking about here. Uh, Joe Biden last night. Their task was to make a decision about whether to move forward with charges in this case. Uh huh. That's their decision to make. That's the council's decision. That's true. Make. That's his job. It is. And they decided not to move forward. Because you're For senile. extraneous commentary, they don't know what they're talking about. Really? It has no place in this report. The bottom line is the matter is now closed. No, the matter is uh, obviously not closed. Peter Ducey amazingly got the first question. I was watching it, and, uh, and I, was, uh, I was saying... Uh, ask him, Ducey should have said, what's my name to him? Because I bet a dollar he couldn't tell you Peter Ducey's name. Oh, thank you, and I'll take some questions. President Biden, something the special counsel said in his report is that one of the reasons you were not charged is because, in his description, you are a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. So his campaign I'm slogan. Mean, and I'm an elderly man, and I know what the hell I'm doing. I've been president, and I put this country back on its feet. He put, the, he put the country back on its feet, you know, after the Great War. Uh, Joe Biden and Peter Ducey. How totally bad out. is your memory, and can you continue as president? My memory is so bad, I let you speak. That's that was his joke. That's, that's you know your memory has gotten worse, Mr. No, president? No, my memory is not good. My memory is fine. My memory, take a look at what I've done since I've become president. Okay. None of you thought I could pass any of the things I got passed. What? How's that happen? You know, I guess I just forgot what was going on. Opening the border, Venezuelan gang, gangs marauding in New York. Um, you know, just uh, just amazing. I've got more from the uh, press conference. Um, and again, he, uh, he waddled off and then he uh, doddered back. And he said that the president of Egypt was the president of Mexico. 
In the past week, he couldn't come up with who Hamas was. He thinks the French president is the president from 40 years ago. The German chancellor is the chancellor from Ronald Reagan's presidency. It is time for Joe Biden to leave the White House, even though that means Kamala Harris moves in. Then what do the Democrats do? They are in a a gender dysphoric panic today. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit chrisplantcruise.com. Now, to be fair, last night it was much later than Joe Biden is normally up. He uh, He's usually in his pajamas and his ankle socks after uh, his afternoon episode of Hazel. And um, and he packs it in. He's in his high chair, swinging his feet back and forth. Um, remarkable stuff. Now, again, they're attacking the special counsel and attacking Donald Trump to change the subject because that's what they do. It's the Soviet playbook and the Democrat playbook. Let's go to uh, let's go to the phones, Michael. Let's let's go to Dave calling from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Dave, you're on the Chris Plant show. Hey, Chris, thanks for having me. Hope you're doing well. Enjoy your show. Thank you. I think we got a little wrong on the 25th Amendment here. This is the Democrats doing this. They want the big bad Republicans to invoke the 25th Amendment so that we're the people that throw poor Joe out on the street, and then they're left with Cammy, and Cammy's going to look around and get told that your polls stink, you can't be our nominee, and then guess who gets ushered in? Mr. Teeth from California. So yeah. we're going to do it again. We're going to shoot ourselves in the foot. So you think we should just leave Joe right where he is and let the voters decide? Well, no, it's not. That's not that. crazy. I have that out. I'm just, I'm just looking at what's going on. We're going to do their dirty work for him. Well, and uh, you're right. They'll demonize the Republicans. Come forward, and we've got one Republican member of Congress calling for the 25th Amendment that I'm going to play for you today. Uh, but, you know, certainly they're looking to, to vilify and villainize the Republican Party and blame the Republican Party for everything from the open border uh, to the stupid economy, which they keep telling us is the best economy ever. And the Washington Post headline, the economy is not good. It's great. Um, somewhere, maybe in billionaire land on Martha's Vineyard or something like that. Uh, but you think that the Republicans should not pursue the 25th Amendment Uh, means of removing Joe Biden, because that would be a win for the Democrats. It it would be a win and a loss both ways, but I I think we need to couch this, and we're not very good at couching things, we all know that, Yep. but couch it so it doesn't look like we're the bad guys. How do you do that? Uh, You know, I could join you and I could pay me millions to think of this thought. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, Good thought. Talking to uh, my friend Sebastian Gorka. Gorka. About the 25th Amendment and uh, the back and forth on that. You know, Republicans, and I do have a Republican congresswoman this morning that I uh, hope to play for you, pushing for the 25th Amendment. Now, you've got to, you know, it's uh, his own administration has to, his own cabinet and his own vice president, Kakala, would have to give the nod to his removal under the 25th Amendment. If we were actually going down that road, and we're not, uh, presumably there would be a point at which he would have to fake an illness. We played the audio for you yesterday of Joe Biden back in 2019 or 2020, saying that, you know, if the day ever came and it was all a convoluted uh, thing— He'd just fake an illness. He'd say, oh, I've got an illness and I couldn't possibly stay and I'd leave. And uh, that could happen. And his illness would be related to his brain, of course, because it doesn't work. When we disagree, it'll be just like so far. It's been just like when Barack and I did. If 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 I reach something where there's a a fundamental disagreement we have based on a moral principle, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll I'll develop some disease and say I have to resign. Now, that doesn't make any sense because he's talking about when he was vice president and if he had a big disagreement with Barack Obama as president, then he'd fake a disease and he'd resign. 
Now, he's the president, and if he had a disagreement with the vice president, Kamala Harris, what a joke, uh, then he would fake an illness and step down. It's not that he makes sense on a normal day, but, you know, we, we've known, we've talked about it here since he was campaigning, that he's not up to the task, that his brain is broke, that it's no good. Now, last night, let's go back uh, after Peter Ducey. And again, Peter Ducey should have said to him, I have a follow-up question. What's my name? It would have been a great follow-up question because I believe it would have stumped him. And he's got this thing going with Peter Ducey, but I'll bet that last night he could not have come up with his name. And President Biden today is meeting at the White House with uh, the German Chancellor Schultz. He knows nothing, but uh, but we'll... Uh, and then is he going to hold the traditional joint press conference with the visiting leader, the Chancellor of Germany, Deutschland? I know nothing, nothing. And that uh, maybe uh, Biden should say that today if they do have a joint press conference. I wouldn't be surprised if they somehow reduced that or or canceled it. Um, there were it was interesting last night at the White House. Peter Ducey got the first question, and he asked a good question. Joe Biden jumped in to cut him off and was being angry and, you know, get off my lawn and, and all that stuff. But uh, then there were, there were four women in the front row. Three of the four women were Asian-American women, and uh, they were really speaking up and uh, making it clear that they had some, some questions to ask. And uh, Joe Biden eventually went to one of the uh, Asian-American women reporters that were trying to get questions in, and good for them. And the one farthest from the camera finally got a question in, and Joe Biden started yelling at her, that's your judgment. Uh, You know, like, hey, maybe you're not well, Joe. That's your judgment. He's wagging his finger at her and and scowling and uh, spitting mad. And he said, that's not the judgment of the press, he says. For months when you were asked about your age, you would respond with the words, watch me. Many American people have been watching, and they have expressed concerns about your age. That is your judgment. That is your judgment. That is not the judgment of the press. They express concerns about your mental acuity. They say that you are too old. Mr. President, in December, you told me that you believe there are many other Democrats who could defeat Donald Trump. So why does it have to be you now? What What is your answer to that question? Because I'm the most qualified person in this country to be president of the United States and finish the job I started. Finish the job I started because America hasn't been drowned in the bassinet yet. We're still strangling the United States of America. We're still importing gangs from Venezuela. So there's a lot more damage yet to be done. And uh, it did get a little loud in there uh, for, uh, for a while with the uh, reporters, really these uh, four women really speaking up. And there was one man trying to get a question in, too. And I'm not criticizing them. I, I think it was perfectly appropriate to speak up and try to get a question. And you may remember every Trump press conference, even with his press secretaries, sounded like that uh, very loud. And then here comes Joe Biden. This was he had uh, theoretically wrapped up his event his remarks and taking a few questions. It was unclear when he came out whether he was going to take questions, but there was press in the room, uh, which might suggest that he's going to take questions, but he could have just wandered off because it's past his bedtime. He might have had his pajamas on under his suit so he could peel peel off his clothes <clears throat> like uh, Batman slide down the pole to his iron lung in the basement. But here's where Joe Biden hit. Then he walked away, and and it was the same women shouting questions at him. And he foolishly turned around and came back to the podium. And I think the White House press staff and the Secretary of State and Defense were probably breathing something of a sigh of relief when he wandered off. And then he foolishly came back to take more questions. And this is where he's asking, one of the the questions being asked, I think, sent him back to the podium was about, uh, the Middle East, and there's a war, and American hostage is being held by a terrorist group that he's going to funnel huge sums of money to under this so-called border bill. That's not a border bill at all. And here's where Joe Biden, now the president of Egypt, is a man named El Sisi. And El Sisi uh, was asked to open the southern border of the Gaza Strip, which is along the southern border of, of Israel. 
and it goes into the Sinai Peninsula, which is Egyptian territory. It's Egypt. And he's trying to say that he talked to al-Sisi about, President al-Sisi in Egypt, about opening the southern border, the Rafah Gate, uh, which uh, goes into Egypt. And he screwed up and somehow had Mexico on his brain. As you know, initially, the president of Mexico, al-Sisi, did Mexico. not want to open up the gate to what? allow humanitarian material to get in. What? I talked to him. I convinced him to open the gate. He, he, the, the gate has not been opened. Uh, the gate is not open, and, and he's not the president of Mexico. And just the other day, you couldn't remember Hamas, and you got the French president's name wrong, and instead named, and he said he had met with the French president at the G7, which he said was NATO. The G7 is not NATO. The French president is not Francois Mitterrand, uh, although he was the French president decades ago when he was still alive, and then he cited the German Chancellor Helmut Kohl, who was chancellor during the Reagan era and is also uh, deceased and no longer with us. Joe Biden needs to go. He's not up to the job. Dementia Joe has got to go. That's a fact, Jack. He talked to the president of Mexico about opening the border. My best girl, now we were you know, kind of howling and laughing, and then, you know, you got to be a little bit sad during this, too, because because it's while it's funny and ridiculous, on the one hand, it's tragic, on the other hand, because he's actually the president of the United States of America. And he spoke to President Sissy about opening the border. My best girl said, that's because somewhere rattling around in the back of his uh, empty brain, his empty head, he's he's got to be thinking about our southern border. And it, and it crept into his alleged thinking about the war in the Middle East that didn't exist when President Trump was in the White House and Hamas, uh, which he's planning on funding again. And, uh, and, he, and he confused, he conflated the Mexican border crisis with the war in the Middle East. And, you know, the Egyptians don't want the Palestinians coming into Egypt because they'd have to shoot them all. And probably would, because nobody in that neighborhood wants the so-called Palestinians, not an actual ethnic group, to come into Jordan or even Syria, which is a war-torn hellhole. And they don't want the Palestinians coming in because they know they'll be trouble. There'll be trouble for Egypt, for Jordan, for Syria. Nobody wants them. They have experience. But Joe Biden, yeah, I spoke to the president of Mexico uh, El Sisi, what are you talking about? You know, the usual stuff. Just uh, just amazing. Joe Biden. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, and then uh, he, you know, the classified documents, which he not only kept illegally, but distributed, shared, put out there. Uh, that was the first finding of the special counsel, Robert Herr is that he violated the law, that he shared classified documents, including sources and methods, the most sensitive of classified documents. If Donald Trump had done this, the media would be uh, self-immolating in front of Mar-a-Lago and throwing rocks over the wall because they'd be so angry about it. Joe Biden doesn't, and they're like, what? What? That's just sources and methods and classified documents being distributed. That's no big deal. So what did Joe Biden do? Well, he did what all Democrats do. He passed the buck. He blamed his staff. I take responsibility for not having seen exactly what my staff was doing. Things that appeared in my garage, things that came out of my home, things that were moved, were moved not by me, but my staff. But my staff. He never I did does have responsibility to that. That was my staff was supposed to do that. And my staff did not do it in the way that, for example, I didn't know how half the boxes got in my garage until I found out half. staff gathered them up, put them together, and took them to the garage in my home. The other half he knew. He knew about the, how the other half got there, but one half he didn't know. And again, the executive summary begins, we conclude that no criminal charges are warranted in this matter. Our investigation uncovered evidence that President Biden willfully retained and disclosed classified materials after his vice presidency, when he was a private citizen. 
The materials included marked classified documents about military and foreign policy in Afghanistan, notebooks containing Mr. Biden's handwritten entries about issues of national security and foreign policy implicating sensitive intelligence sources and methods. Now, that is the worst of the worst. But then much later they go on to explain that because no jury would convict him because they'd feel sorry for him because he's such a sad sack and they would find him to be a terribly tragic and sad figure that no jury would convict him. Now, it's not really, it shouldn't be up to the prosecutor to make a decision like that, but honestly, it's uh, he couldn't remember when he started as vice president. He couldn't remember when he finished as vice president. He couldn't remember when he was vice president. He couldn't remember when Bo died, his son, within years, years, just amazing stuff, and he's got to go. He's too unfit to be held accountable in a court of law, but he is fit to be president of the United States and occupy the Oval Office. He thinks Egyptian President al-Sisi is president of Mexico. Just extraordinary stuff. Yes, sir. Too unwell to stand trial, just fine to be president of the United States. There's no way out of this. So they attack the special counsel, and they change the subject, and they attack Donald Trump. It's what they do. That's your Democrat Party. Just amazing. Yes, sir. All right, uh, one more, because we have this, uh, this uh, moment where the, where the press actually started to speak up and try to get an answer. Joe Biden was, you know, having a brain episode, but it sounded like this. It made me happy. Mr. President, it sounded like that for a little bit. But they concluded that he would be a sympathetic, well-meaning, elderly man with a poor memory in front of the jury and that no jury would convict him because we're Americans and we'd feel sorry for him and we're not vindictive, vendetta-driven lunatics like apparently the entire Democrat Party today. But classified documents, sources, and methods, he dispersed these documents, and uh, these are the crimes that were committed, and they say it right there, and the news media is burying that part of it because the most insidious power the media has is the power to ignore. And that's what they're doing now, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Uh, all right, um, let me see. I, I don't think we have enough time to do a caller justice, but let's uh, let's take a break here. We'll come back to a caller. And listen to the American people, the voice of the American people. But their goal now is to turn it on Trump. Hey, Trump's old too. It's the politics of I know you are, but what am I? All right? An NBC poll from last month found that for 76% of us, of all political parties, his age is either a major concern or a moderate concern. And after yesterday, that number is going to skyrocket because he proved, and the report proves, that uh, he is not up to doing the job. It's time for Dementia Joe to go. Dementia Joe has got to go. And we're working on a new t-shirt today, too. So stay tuned on that. Hey, here's what you do, Joe. Go out and uh, give a press conference to clean up this whole your memories bad thing. That kind of blew up. MSDNC this morning, morning joke. They did not mention Egypt. Egypt, you know, he, uh, so I talked to, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 El Sisi, president of Mexico. Did they mention, they didn't mention Mexico either, That, as we know that in three hours, didn't mention that. Uh, in 9 a.m., they mentioned Egypt once, um, and in 10 a.m., they mentioned it once, but it's about aid going to Egypt, not about Joe Biden screwing that up. When you're a Democrat, they clean it up for you. They're amazing. Uh, we had a fun tweet from Bob asking, does Joe Biden even remember showering with his daughter? 
I'm sorry, does Joe Biden even remember showering with his daughter? Remember Joe Biden showering with his daughter? It was in her journal and, and at a very inappropriate age. That's uh, just another Joe Biden story. The news media swept under the rug. All right, let's go to the phones. Let's go to Joe calling from Plymouth, Massachusetts. Gesundheit. Joseph, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Joe. Hey, Joe. Where are you going with that gun in your hand? Joe? Joe not there? He's still not there? Okay. Let's go to Mike calling from Queens, New York. Michael, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, good morning, Chris. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. Uh, I just wanted to run something by you, get your opinion on it. Uh Instead of pursuing the 25th Amendment uh, avenue here, why aren't the Republicans up there screaming at the top of their lungs for him to take a competency test? And if he does well on the well enough on the competency test, then turn around and go to the DOJ. There's nothing wrong with this guy. Why aren't you charging him? Oh, see, that's good thinking. I that is very good. You're uh, you should be on Capitol Hill so you can help him out. Yeah, you, I got more brains than that. You, <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you remember President Trump was compelled by a corrupt press corps to take a uh, cognitive test. Uh, which he passed with flying colors, and then they just didn't talk about it. Although on MSD, they, uh, MSDNC, they tried to make fun of him about it, and that was their only coverage. But that is a, uh, that is a smart play, Mike. I like that. Uh, demand that Joe Biden now, after all of this, take a, a cognition test, a cognitive test. Uh, and if he passes with flying colors, then you go back to the DOJ and say, well, why isn't he being charged? That is exactly. that is a good you set up a, a, a another no win for them. Uh, that is a, a brilliant call, Michael. That is great. I'm glad that you called in and shared oh. that with me. Why didn't I think of that? Thank you. Uh, and then there's another uh, secondary for this one too. That if he's not capable or competent, then as in contract law, incompetent people can't sign contracts. They can't enforce them. What about every executive order and every bill that he's, uh, every law that he signed? Does that now become null and void? You are the best. That is Mike from Queens, New York. (laughs) 